this subject goes by many names, but one name it goes by is marriage equality. Do most DFL candidates for governor support marriage equality? What about Republican candidates? Is marriage equality a social justice issue? I think it's a social justice issue. I, I, my faith taught me that we're supposed to care about each other and, and we ought to be encouraging people to make commitments to each other. So I happen to think, Kanye, kind of, I've been married almost 30 years and, um, and I frankly think if other people love each other and want to care about each other in sickness and in health, and wow, that's a wonderful thing, we ought to encourage it. So I favor it and I think it's a social justice matter to treat people equally. Obviously, um, well, I, I, I can tell you the Republican candidates don't support it. Most of the Democrats do support it, but I think times are changing very, very quickly. I, uh, we had a hearing on my marriage equality bill a few weeks ago, and um, one of the Republican senators who had been there six years ago during the height of the constitutional amendment thing, she said, I'm really pleased at the change in tone and how this is a good conversation about marriage equality. And she was making it pretty clear that she had moved miles on this in the last six years. So I think it's, my prediction, this may not be a good prediction to make, but I'll, I'll predict that 30 years from now, 40 years from now, most of the evangelical churches will be marrying same-sex couples. And I might be wrong, but I remember the same feeling about when interracial couples were required to be allowed. Those same churches said, we'd never marry them. And I think that's changed in 30 or 40 years. And I know it was a religious value thing for them, and, but religious ideas change over time in their minds. And Jerry Falwell, before he died, I know Liberty University became an equal opportunity employer. So people do change. The, I think the state and the church may have different interests here. I was on a three-year study at, at Emory on rights of children, and one of the attorneys there gave a phrase I've never quite been able to shake. The state's interest should be sustained, provident care for children. How that's done, who gets to adopt and so on, that can be adapted. The church can say, we only believe marriage is this, we only believe those rights. It can do that, but it can't intervene on what the state is doing on this. So sustained, you can't just, and that's where marriage equality is in, intentionally sustained, provident, they're getting together for the sake of the kid, and uh, make, make that the pitch instead of trying to settle it with all the difference. The other thing, John, you might be right about the 40-year thing. I get to a lot of campuses and it is not an issue. The kids don't have the faintest idea why older people are worried about these issues. <laughs> And, and the other thing is, I mean, supporting marriage equality doesn't mean, I mean, the whole point is the most intrusive thing. Some of the libertarian attitudes, which I think people think of as the Republican or conservative point of view, the most intrusive thing government can do is tell churches and people who they can marry and who they can't marry. And I think it's very important that my equality, but I actually have a, a purpose section to explain this. And that point is that just as Government should never tell a church who it must marry. It should not tell them who they can't either. And if two consenting adults choose to marry each other and a church wants to marry them, to me, that's the height of freedom of religion, where Michelle Bachman's church may never want to marry a same-sex couple. If this one wants to, it should be allowed to. And that's, what the, that's the only role the government has in this, is that we treat the civil end of it fairly and let, let people of faith make their own choices. That's what religious freedom's about.